Blackfriar and then presenting this film for us because, you know, we're so thankful uh, for them. Your Bama home in Dallas. It's the Blackfriar Pub in Dallas. Man, they, you got to get down there. You got to come. You got to go see it. You know, you got to eat. You got to get you some good uh, drink. Go see Mike Kim. Tell him I sent you and ask for Orange Teague. That's only if you like alcohol, uh, um, alcohol um, as well. If you don't, get you some other kind of tea, okay? Um, but this film um, is brought to you by them. So where we're going to start out at today, if JT is in the Grinch, we're going to go Vandy offense first. Yes. While you got that, I need to give you a couple names, a couple people that you know need to look at, okay, JT, before you go. So, oh, well, number- hold on. I do want to jump in. I want to kind of, I kind of want to, uh, I don't want to bury the lead here. Um, so Justin had asked, um, what's your biggest concern for this game? Um, Oh, and we got this comment. They should have beat Mizzou. This isn't your average Vandy team. I agree, but I think Mizzou is so overrated. Anyways, let's continue. I agree. And, uh, and so what, you know, we try to be very fair. Um, and realistic and, um, I don't know, uh, what's the word? I say positive about stuff, but when you watch film, the one thing is a coach, and when you're watching film, and you always got to try to make sure your kids are ready to play or your team is ready to play. Sometimes you can watch the film, and you know that you're just better than that team, and you still got to motivate them. We're better than Vandy by a lot. (laughs) <laughs> right, regardless. That doesn't mean that you can't lose to them. Um, I think our coaching staff is better. I think our, our talent is better. Um, okay, but there are some people that you got to be able to look at. So number three, so I'm looking up here, Quincy Skinner um, Jr. He's a wide receiver. He's pretty good. He's 6'2", 205. You know, matching him up against young corners could be somewhat an issue. Um, he just talked about the quarterback, Diego uh, yeah, uh, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, he, he is a better passer than he is runner. Um, when we get in this film, you kind of see how they use him, but I, I still think we'll cause problems from him. Um, they got a couple linemen, JT, their left tackle and their right guard are pretty good, um, players. So I think we got to attack their left guard and their right tackle. I think we have a big day with Tim Smith and uh, LT Overton. Um, then their running back is just kind of who he is, who he is. He's a sophomore. Okay. So that's it from their offensive standpoint. So let's go ahead and um, get into it. I don't know how many plays we got. Uh, we have nine, um, much fewer than the 31 that we did last night uh, on offense. Yes. So we can, we can take a little bit of time here if we need to. Um, I chose this one, one, because, uh, a little bit of shifting in eye candy, just like just like we do, right? So we, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to get involved, uh, or or we're gonna have to get shifted correctly. Um, however, that is maybe we won't shift, maybe we will. I I don't know. Like I said, I um, in the in the Georgia review of like I'm not a guy. Sometimes there's teams where you have to kind of respect their shifts. Um, I think Alabama's one of those teams. Um, there's other teams that just motion just for the sake of motioning, just to like add distractions. And sometimes you can just be like, look, I, I really don't care that you're moving this dude around because it ain't actually changing what you're, what you're trying to do. Um, I don't know that Vandy's one of those teams we'll find out, but, um, the point is they like to run their quarterback and, no, I I don't think that this is. Man, I mean, even though he gets loose here, I thought he was going to smack that safety man. That's a. Good, I mean, we're watching Vandy. Vandy's in the white. Well, we gotta we gotta right. see Mizzou too, so we might as well just go ahead and. Know. But that, that but was yeah, that like was a, a great shot for a, a safety to come, drill the quarterback. Okay, so we were talking about it. I think we're we. Um, they're gonna. If, I mean, if they're gonna, th- there's a lot of this. You're gonna see a lot of them trying to get outside uh, and get to the corner. And I just, I don't think that that's. I don't know that it's a good recipe. Um, 
against Alabama's defense. I think I think we've got too much speed. Um, yep. Our DBs are pretty fast. They're pretty good at uh, triggering on runs like this. Uh, if they are going to do this, Vandy's quarterback better be he better be tough because he's yeah. going to get hit. Yeah. So you, they you know they listed saying that this is a, a pro spread offense, but they line up in this formation. Oh, this next four. Play oh, this one here. Had, yeah, where, this pistol full house. Yeah, yeah, this pistol full house of where it's, you know, you get option out of this. So it's still, are you going to be running your quarterback or are you going to pitch it? Because they actually do a lot of this. A lot of options. A lot of options. I don't I don't know if that's, I think we're too fast um, for them to try to do that. This is essentially the option here. And you're going to get your quarterback hit a lot. And you got the potential to put the ball on the ground when you start trying to pitch it backwards. So, um, you know, you line up in this type of formation so you can go either direction and you try to stay balanced is essentially why you try to do that. Um, we ran it at Shelton quite a bit with being Luke and those guys. I don't know if you remember that. Mm-hmm. Um, worked for us, but I'm not sure it's going to go. Then you, you see something like this. They pop straight into a. Yep, and then there's a little bit of pressure, and he goes down. There's a yes. So, I mean, you can see that, and you get that pick play again. Um, what we talked about with uh, Kentucky doing this to Georgia, right? Just he is not actually trying to get to the quarterback. He's just trying to knock this dude loose. Um. Yes. And I'm glad I'm seeing this because, like I said, I gotta, I gotta start stealing oh, that kind of stuff. Because you, <laughs> you do that, and then look, now he's there. There's the lane, and they, it's hard to switch. Hard to switch. Yeah. And he's he's still the one who makes the sack anyway. You know, he's not even trying to get there at first, and then he's you fall right back into mm-hmm. it. You just you pick and roll. You know, concept. Yeah, good catch on that. And I was really looking at the right tackle and said that we need to. Um, exploit him with LT because it, it, it's. I mean, he's good, but he's you know he stops his feet. And once that happens, you're going to have too much power, and you start bending that corner, and it just. You know, I said right tackle and left guard, which who they just attacked. Yeah, they just they their, just uh picked the <laughs> left, left guard. guard. You know, so. Uh, JT, we've been pretty good with some of these uh. Thanks, by the way. Humbly speaking, of finding the talking points, right? Okay. What does this say? Uh, if Vandy doesn't have the receivers that can separate, then Vandy will be in trouble because I don't think they have the front to match up. Um, they don't have the guy that can separate either. Michael Kim says, sorry for being late. Yes, uh, you Too should late. be sorry because I've, already, I've, already, already. I've already roasted you. Um, <laughs> not really, but... Oh, yeah, you did. Because you put him <laughs> up on the screen first. What's up, Cuzzo? Uh, um, co- Max Ritchie says, is Mizzou always single high? Um, the answer is, I don't know. I was not particularly looking at Mizzou for this we study. Really watched that. No, uh, we got a little bit of it, but not much. We were kind of really focused on the Vandy part. See, this uh, Vandy had a lot of two-back sets um, as well, again, they had a lot of formations. We were talking about unbalances and all this kind of stuff. That it's almost like they don't have an identity, brother. Um, the way I was kind of looking at it. But again, it's another option. You know, I just I don't know. Maybe it works. You got to dive. The thing about it, though, when you're on defense, is you got to know who has a dive, who mm-hmm. has a quarterback, and who has a pitch. Um. I just this just crossed my mind. Max Ritchie in the uh, is Mizzou always single high. I don't know that they're always single high. However, um, if I were Kane Womack, um, I would be single high a lot, knowing that they're trying to do this option, and I could that way. What I can do is uh, tell him to take the dive, and I have an extra safety out here for the for the quarterback. And I've got another DB out here for pitch man. It's all covered. And then I would just say, if you can throw the ball, um, do so. 
Uh, we've got Josh Zimlick with 499 Super Chat. Can you explain why almost every team has abandoned the goal line formation in um, imagining that should be short yardage uh, situations? Um, first, thank you for the Super Chat. Second, um, I if we haven't pulled the clips, I will find them personally for you um, before we end here. Um, Vandy is may not actually be one of those teams. Uh, they had a very, very unbalanced uh, set when they got down to the goal line. Good like us. They steal it out of our playbook, I think. But you're right. I don't think that they necessarily get away from that. Um, it does, from a defensive perspective, I think it, it brings so many people in the box that you got to be really good at the run game if you're going to, you know, go – two tight ends or three tight ends, two backs, you know, you better have some solid people in there because you're basically going to have nine people in a box. Mm -hmm. And and I'll add this um, in the modern era of football, um, kind of started by um, Art Bryles uh, in history. And then even now going into Josh Heupel, who has, really just abused uh abused the uh, the college football field is the game has gotten to where offenses are trying to create more space yep. they are just trying to spread people out and attack areas of the field where you're not not necessarily attack people um so it, it ebbs and flows right this is we used to be three yards in a cloud of dust, and then they started figuring, okay, well, if we just spread people out, you got all these big, big dudes in here. I've got athletic guys, so if we move them, move them out of the way, I'm a little bit faster than you. I can get in. Um, and the defense's job is to try to restrict space. So I think at this era moment of football, um, the closer and tighter things get, the easier it is actually for the defense at this time. Uh, and as defenses start adapting more and more to playing out in space, you'll see like the 49ers going back back in um, to where it's the offense is going to start putting in those big heavy guys and, t and saying that you're, you're not big enough anymore. Yeah, because you're not working on it either, too. Okay. Uh, great question, brother. Thank you. And thank you for the contribution. Uh, we do appreciate it, as always. All right. Uh, this same play, it's just the option? Yeah. All right. So it's a triple option, basically. All right. There's an unbalanced set that we were talking about. I thought this was kind of unique because the tight end actually blocks down. You got a puller, the wing. Yeah, I mean, it, it's like, kind of weird because this is this linebacker. Oh, good lord! You, and and this is kind of a false read, right? I mean, actually, let's uh, let's look at it here because you've got a guard pulling circle. You've got a guard pulling this way, right? And then I wing think we're gonna get an Mike insert. Backer. Hmm? Yeah, but the wing takes that Mike Backer, blows him up to kills him. Good right. lord. So, I mean, it's you, you're getting belly front side. You get uh, the quarterback turning this way, but the running back is actually going to bend it back. I wonder if this is designed or if he just kind of saw this, but if it's designed, that's uh, pretty good. I don't think it is, though. I think it's, I think as you were talking about, the left guard is just getting beat in here because, <laughs> yes. uh, oops, they've got to play. I mean, they we've got defenders here, but this is this would be a pretty good gain. Yeah, he's seeing color. Yes, and you're right. I, I think we're just gonna the left guard's gonna have a hard time. Yeah. Tim so, uh, also linebackers. If there's anybody playing linebacker? Um, this is why we stay tight to the edge. This is this is why we don't run up field like this, uh, because this ends up being your play to make, and you're up the field. And you've given four yards of space here, and look at mm. you. 
Can we talk about Mizzou's defense? That was not a very good tackle by the safety. The other safety that missed him. All right. Unbalance. I put this on here. If you didn't see, you might want to see that from the back end. The quarterback and the running back shift over. Full. And to the running back. And to the quarterback. Fake pitch. Pass. When you outmatch, man, you start doing stuff like this. Talk about it all the time, right? So you yep. got to be on on puts for... puts up on tape that you got that your opponent has to uh, spend time looking at, preparing for. I still like ours better than from last week when Miro walked off. And... Mm-hmm. <laughs> ours are a little smoother, you know. But anyway, there's another set again. What do we say we're calling this? This time they actually got a blocker, but the they sent the cross yep. block to try to block the guy. So that was just a little different again. Yeah. You got it, and this is this is really their favorite play. This this speed option with the quarterback or triple yeah. option, I guess. Well, once our quarterback becomes a runner, we need to be putting some shoulder pads on him because if he holding the ball, we got. It. You got to hit him. You don't want to be trying to target nobody. That's not what I'm saying. But if you want to run the ball, look at this one. What JT was talking about, goal line. Yeah. They're all condensed. Yeah, and everybody's over here to the left. Um, And this is kind of what I was talking about of, like, you would think, you know, you got all these bodies over here, and this is where the ball is going, and they're like, no. Green grass. Space. So and, and when you uh, we need to point this out because you talk about this when you have the unbalanced set it's also what number is that guy wearing at the right tackle this guy is eligible because that's a tight end or something yeah and not a tackle the tackle is over so we call it tackle over they right, move the so. right tackle over there somewhere to make the third he probably lined up at tight end Spot, yeah. Right, so they've only got three eligible receivers, by the way. Well, I guess four if you count the back. But um, because of the numbers, those guys can actually go out for a pass even though he is technically the right tackle. Uh, What I do like about what Missouri does is um, they knock the front, which is what I call it's NOC, new offensive center. Because even though he's the one that's snapping the ball, uh, the center of the line is actually right here. Right? So now you have, like, if you imagine this was the center, guard, tackle, center, and then we have the guard, tackle, with tight end, and then two tight ends on this side. Um, It helps you look symmetrical. Um, However... You have to set the edge here, buddy, and you got to help. You can't just. Uh, I don't know. You can't just do one. whatever this is. I mean, got to come out of the back, fullback. That's too easy, man. But there it is. So, you know, you'll see some. Uh, again, how many formations have we seen that were awkward and weird, too? It's just, it's. I don't know what their identity is, and maybe that's good. They're just saying, "Hey, you don't you don't know what you're going to get." Oh, I put this on here um, because although this is not a completion, um, this was kind of just a. It, it this would have made more sense had we also did the Georgia film, but I was talking about how um, that last play for Georgia was a big boy throw, and. You're throwing a fade from the opposite hash, yes. which is kind of ridiculous. Um, same thing here. Like this is, this is not a high percentage throw. This is so far away. Um, but it's not being thrown at the front of the end zone. It's being thrown at the back of the end zone. So at least it's like your guy gets it or nobody does. Not like the one that Carson Beck threw, that was at the front of the end zone that allowed the defender to make a play on it. 
Um, so this is better, but you can see because of how far the ball has to travel, the corner can just look at this the entire way. Yeah. I think that's a good cutoff, by the way, which we talk about on the other film. Okay. Right. And this, this is, is actually uh, offensive pass interference, uh, I believe. Yeah. Not much going on there. Okay. That was a good choice, brother. Nice pick. How many more plays offense we got? Uh, that was it. Yeah. We can move on to defense now. You got data, JT. You got stuff all kind of – I mean, film looks good. You got flashing lights going all around the film. How do you do it, Mr. Producer? How do you do it? <laughs> uh, well, Titan Texas is uh, responsible for helping us pay somebody else to do that. <laughs> All right, well, let's get it. So let me give you a little bit about defense uh, first, so my thoughts about this, right? So a couple key people to watch. The secondary, there's this guy named uh, Derricky Wright. He's a free safety, number 19. They got this guy all over the field, JT. He's a free, he plays free safety, um, but they he covers the slot. He's in the box. It's kind of like how we were talking about, uh, I forget the guy's name from Georgia last week. Uh, but he, he, they, they use him the exact same way with that okay they do play field corner and boundary corner so that field corner is pretty doggone good the guy that they want to get out there and try to um, cover martel height okay he's number 25 and mike linebacker uh langston he's um good i still think we can get after him a little bit i think we're better than him but he's pretty good there and their defensive tackle is number 15 uh zaylin wood pretty doggone good so what do i think are the keys to this i think we need to attack the other safety Okay, C.J. Taylor. Sorry, I don't know you're not supposed to be calling people name on this, but that's why I think we need to go if we're trying to figure out who we're going to match up on. Go at number one. And then I think we need to run, J.T., to our left, to our left. Okay, I think they're weaker on that side um, of the ball. So I anticipate that we're going to have a lot of success running the ball. I think Jam Miller. Um, and Haynes, they have great days running great a great game running the football. Doesn't mean Miro can't do it. I just think we're we're better than up front, and, and you'll see um, for some of these gaps that they're giving up, <laughs> um, and maybe some of the unsoundness that they have that I think we'll be able to exploit that other teams have it. Okay, there we go. That's my little piece. All right, so this is um, Vandy's or. Er- Mizzou's second play here. Um, so, look, they're already in quads. <laughs> so here we go. Ineligible receiver. Eligible receiver. Eligible receiver. <laughs> Eligible receiver. Um, we keep pointing this out because uh, Bama likes to start out like this, and then they motion guys around, as we saw from the Georgia game. Um Mizzou didn't move. They, they lined up like this uh, and then ran the ball. Um, so that might be something that may be inspiring here um, for Alabama. Now, this wasn't this wasn't it from Mizzou. Um, not very good up front from Mizzou, but uh-uh. this probably since this is what we call uh EOP elephants on parade uh fast flow this way i'm assuming this ball is probably supposed to be oh, out here not cutting back to an unblocked um defensive end that's probably not the move here that's true now they have good size Vandy and all that kind of stuff. And you see some stuff. And what JT said is uh, I love it because he talked about how they lined up in it. But we always shift and move. And Missouri didn't. Um, so makes it a whole lot easier from this standpoint. Now, I thought this was interesting, JT, because that press corner safety runs out of there and gets like playing two middle here. here. Yeah, it's, almost a three high safety. It's it's and different. it wouldn't have been that bad if uh one, I think this is probably an illegal shift or illegal motion. And then yeah. 
that's not a good ball. Uh, no, but there's space. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about Missouri. You know, they didn't even take advantage of something like that. But there was space for him to throw anywhere because that receiver could have just stopped right there, mm-hmm. not go back outside. But the running back is wide open. I mean, they're rushing four. Um, and you'd have know. to think, though, uh, Vandy is not going to blitz that often, right? No. I mean, I don't think so. That seems like the thing not to do. <laughs> not what I do, huh? So, okay, I think I put this one in here really just because the amount of time that he had to throw. They're rushing four, like you said, if not blitzing, and our linemen are just as good or better than these guys and Vandy in the white again um, is sending four guys, and, I mean, there's nothing going on. Yeah, so this is uh pressure. I, I was looking at the I was looking at the time in the clip here. Um ball is snapped at we'll say roughly four and a half seconds of the clip. You get a play fake, you stand around, uh, and then the ball is out now. It's about five seconds. Yeah. That's and, uh that's an eternity. And Miller might take off. Because I mean, there's still a lot of space, you know. I, I think we're just in a better spot, and this, there was just no separation from the D line. I mean, there's single blocks. Look at the left, look at the end. At, again, it's just yeah, the uh, their right end. Uh, yes, where number fifty two is is just there. He's the getting other, he's getting bounced right now. I mean, only one guy gets up the field at all, so I don't know. I just, I just think we're better than they are. Okay, let's see what we get here. Trips into Trips the boundary. Into the boundary. Yeah. Um, so they made a play on this again. It, again, we try to be fair and show some good stuff. Yeah, them. I was looking at this one because uh, their right guard gets blown up here, big time. That that defensive end or tackle. It's pretty good. He straight arms him. He's being physical. That's what I'm saying. We need to run. I think we need to run away from. Run away from. The, yeah, the goal. We need to run That's what you're saying. Him. We need to go left, not right, because that guy's pretty good. Yep, yep. He, he's really good. We, we don't want to go over there. It, it doesn't mean we can't. I just if we're trying to find matchups. Oh, okay. So this one. I want you to see the, and you probably need to circle JT, and you'll see it. So the three technique on the right side, I'm going to assume he is responsible for the B gap, uh, which is the gap right in front of him. But, again, this is what I'm saying. We need to go left. It just, if you watch what gap he ends up in, uh, he gets reached before the ball even. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he's already... He's way on yeah, the backside. So he should be here because you get the reach, you seal him out, and then there's the crease. And that's where he actually cuts the ball back. Uh, whoop, right in there where he's supposed to be. That's why I think we're just going to have a big running day because that guy is not the answer. All right, more shifts. They're moving around. They're second again. I'm – you know, this is a, a free yeah, so, blitzer. Yeah, uh, yeah. Pass Pro uh, broke down on this one. It's However, um, this is kind of just even going back to last week. I think this is not this is not the move. Um, Georgia well, tried to do this for for an entire half. Um, Which is center getting... going? I'm sorry, I'm watching them too. <laughs> They're not supposed to do that, but. That's an easy pickup. Our guys will pick that up in a heartbeat. And then what I think JT saying, you don't want to be a one-on-one with that wide receiver out here. Well, I'm just saying, like, Georgia was trying to do this exact thing for an entire half, and they were down 28 points um, after <laughs> that. And then they decided to stop doing that and actually just drop seven in coverage, and the game changed. So I'm, I'm just thinking, if I'm Vandy's defensive coordinator, my first thing is, like, we're not going to come out blitzing uh, because that was a recipe for disaster um, last week. 
maybe we just need to we need to get a little bit more creative, um, maybe simulate pressure, um, but we can't just vacate a spot in the field. Yeah. I don't I don't know. Okay. Well But that, we'll see what they do. Thing. Maybe maybe they got some maybe they got something a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Yep, and then we're not covering the back out of the backfield. Oh, this is that's what, so uh, annoying. So I don't understand. annoying. And this tell me you hadn't seen this this uh, motion and orbit. I don't know what we call this. You know, motion where you go in front, then come back around. Uh, yo yo motion. I don't know what, what we actually uh, call it. We we'll call it a no. we call it a return orbit. Yo yos for the Y. Um, yeah. So he does that, and then the running back just sneaks out, and I mean, so what I saw here is just, they're not sound. I'm sorry. I I was trying not to be able to say that because they're they're college coaches, and maybe one day I want a job, you know, and do something. They're just not, I don't know, it's almost like they're just kind of guessing. I mean, even if the linebacker goes where he's supposed to go, so let's take a look. The guy that ends up chasing him, I'm, I'm assuming that's his guy from the beginning, because um, he he's he's lost right now with his eyes, and that guy's running. But even if he took him, the other guy's right, going to be got, open. <laughs> then you got the tight end just sneaking out. <laughs> way back, yes. And uh, yeah, he's in a, he's in a bind. He, he's wrong. Whichever way, whichever one he picks, he's picking the wrong guy. Yeah. So it just, I just think when you're talking about Kevin DeBoer now and he's looking at this, I'm wondering what he's putting on his sheet. Like, man, what can I call? I mean, seems like he's going to be able to call a lot of stuff. Okay. Yikes. You know, um, hold on. <laughs> I'll let you look at this, then I'm going to let you tell you why I actually picked this play. Okay. Well, at first, I wanted to see what the game situation is. There's 57 seconds left in the second. Um, and half. so I guess I get it. They're, they're an empty. They're worried about getting bombed on. That's fine. They're just trying to keep everything in front of them. I'll, uh, I'll, I won't criticize the, the coverage call here. I will criticize uh, the tackling right here though. Um, yeah, I'm gonna tell you what I criticize when you go back to the wide piece. Because it has nothing to do with Vandy. Wide receiver at the top, JT, on Mizzou. Nothing. What the hell is that? Everybody moving. What? What is he? He stuck, or it just? That can't be by design. Uh, that's the. Even... That's the. Well, I was gonna say that's the. I don't know what the play is, but you at least like move. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the other guy doesn't go anywhere either, but he moves. The, the receiver at the bottom. He at least turns like, you know, throw me a bubble or something. But the other guy didn't at all. So, anyway, yeah, I'm being petty. Um, but still, when you're talking about who's who's playing Bandy, which would be us, I, I don't think we look like Mizzou at all. Okay, another clean pocket. No. Uh, he doesn't catch the ball. But it still was just the thought of they're still got this middle safety or Again, right. two middle guy that's not playing. First of all, he's lined up 12 yards deep, I think, on the snap. You know, he's 12 yards away from the wide receiver. So down distance is what? Uh, second and 10, 43 okay, so seconds to go. Can you guys see that? You guys know where we can tell what the down distance is. If you guys haven't figured that out, it's up there on the screen for you to see it if you really want to know. Oh. Um, what it is and what's the situation, which is really good because when you're doing culture points, you say, ah, you know, what was the down and distance? So it seems kind of weird for their middle, your deep safety to be lined up like that because, I don't know, maybe there's a tendency that they don't run the ball in that down and distance. I don't, I don't know because that's essentially five in the box. You yeah, know, and I, I'm not quite sure. Like, what, what are we – why are we – you turn you late. About, you talking about Andy in the middle backer, or yeah, whoever this uh, whoever this pole player is, because it's like you you clearly have the vertical of number three. 
you're you've got in between the hash like you, you so he'll turn and run yeah he's, right because he ends up getting help right the, so Luckily, it's kind of like if he throws all well that ends well but like if this is ryan williams over here on this side yes safety can't just leave dude's gonna be wide open for a bomb this right because you run three verticals and your middle say i don't know if that's a linebacker or what that is can't really see yeah, well he's number two um uh, he's, he's got two. all the swag of a db number as far two. as how he's dressed he is their star sophomore transfer okay but yeah anyway uh, those are just things i think you exploit that he that DeBoer sets up, like you said, you send Ryan Williams deep, and now you got this guy, you know, whoever you want to put to line up against him. That could be a, a huge pass. Okay. Uh, yeah, I like this uh, just because of the the stunt and twist. Um, they're not they're not picking up twist at all. Um, our, our 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 line is better. I think that's what you're trying to say. Our guys are going to pass this off at the top. And I, yeah, they've been doing a good job with this, um, keeping their head up and and being able to pass things off like this. Still four man rush. So, okay, that same play. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the same play. I was just looking at what the route combo where it was. It's, Slot fade up at the top. Okay, so the one that I had on here is if you look at the secondary and the bottom, I just felt like I didn't know what these two – the safeties seem awfully close to each other or what the dirt, your middle oh. – both are in between the hash two is these still – Yeah, I don't, I don't know why you – what reason there is to be that close together at any point during this play. Again, I know maybe I'm being negative, and, and it just doesn't. It doesn't. It looks like two guys are going to the middle third. It makes it hard when you watch film because you're trying to figure out: Are they really going to do this? Mm -hmm. You know, against us? Because you're like, surely we're not going to see this. Um, all right, a three man front. Yeah. So this is uh, same dude getting bum rushed. That's why I put this one on here. He just yeah getting lit up off the line of scrimmage. Like so, I mean, he actually he makes the tackle by putting the, the guy. lineman in the quarterback's lap. So they just move, homie. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know what seventy four is doing. I, I don't understand why. What is he complaining about? He he put his hands in your chest and bench pressed you five yards back. What, what's the? What are you talking about? Yeah, he holding. No, it ain't. You just know you're about to get talked about in the meeting room. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think this is our last one here. Another round play. I probably missed one where the guy got reached a couple times, and this might be it from the backside. I think um, the center, the nose tackle, so check him yeah, out. He's getting reached, yep. He got reached. So when we talk about this, he got – he he's up, needs to be in one of the A-gaps. He ends up in the backside B gap. I don't know if you right. So what he about. should either be here or here. Um, some some defenses will two gap this. Some defenses will lag, meaning if the running back goes this way, he wants to be in this gap so that he can take away cutback. You know, I don't know what their rules are, um, but I do know because they're in a tight front, and that guy's in the B gap, and this guy's in the B gap that where he should not be at any point is in between these two guys or in between those two guys. Um, and unfortunately that is what happens where he ends up. Both of these dudes are getting reached. Yes. Now you got a free runner up to the linebacker. I mean, it just, it one, one cut by a running back. Because we can out overpower this other guy, and he's he's out the gate right now for us. Probably, you know, I think our running back is better than than theirs. So 
I just thought that was just another way why I think that our running game is really going to dominate uh, in this. I hadn't figured out how many rushing yards that we're going to have, but I think we're going to have a lot. A bunch. Okay. Well, then maybe maybe that'll be the uh, maybe that'll be the fan of the week question. Then um, point spread in whose favor, and how many total rushing yards does Alabama have? And I will leave that in a comment. If you leave it in the chat, it will go away. It doesn't count. When this video is done, I will pin a comment to the, um, to this video. Reply there with. Your point spread in whose favor and the amount of rushing yards that Alabama will have. Last thing, do not edit you do not edit your comment. <laughs> oh, you cheated. Uh, you just gave a way to figure out how to change it. Yeah. I know that will be everybody gonna be right. This will be a disqualification this week. Hey everybody, George Teague here, formerly of the Alabama Crimson Tide and the Dallas Cowboys. So let me ask you a question. Are you an athlete? or a coach looking to boost your online visibility, well, you've got to check out On3. Their personalized web pages amplify the total you on and off the field. Whether you want to grow your visibility, build your brand, or simply show the world who you truly are, On3 is here for you. They showcase the complete person, celebrating your passions, perseverance, and the pursuit of excellence beyond sports. These web pages are the ultimate digital hub to elevate your brand and highlight your journey. So head on over to www.on3.io slash microsites and get started with On3 today.